as a boy, I was uh, inspired uh, by the homilies of the priests in the parish and uh, wanted to become a preacher. The pastors were Jesuits. I also liked to play priest uh, when I was young and I used to use a, a steel vase as a chalice while I was uh, saying the, celebrating the mass for my altar service. As uh, Providence had it, I came under the direction of a Gujarat a Jesuit, Father Raphael Aguinaga, who was doing his uh, studies at uh, St. Xavier's in Bombay. When I confided to him that I had a desire to become a priest, he asked me whether I would like to join the Anvad mission as a Jesuit. At the word mission, my whole body glue because uh, the word attracted me after what I read about Francis Xavier. And uh, of course, I wanted to become a missionary. So immediately and enthusiastically, I told him, yes, yes, I would like to join. But at that time, really, I had absolutely no idea what, uh, where Andabad was or who the Jesuits were. And as I was coming out of the gate of the church compound, I saw one white cassock, one gora, one uh, white man, and uh, I took for granted that he was a priest, or this, and he caught me. I said, it is over. So he, because my pockets, I had mangoes, and, and he took me to the parish priest. So I was a bit scared, but of course not scared of parish priest, but <laughs> scared of this, you know, uh, this father, and it was Father Herrero. And then he inquired about, uh, about me, and uh, Paris Priest said, of course, his father is working in the bank here, next to the compound. And they called my father. My father came. Oh, before that, I, as soon as he called, he asked me, do you want to become a priest? I said, yes, yes, if I can get rid of him. <laughs> if I can get rid of him, I said, anything to be out of this trouble. And then he took me to the father, and then he called me, and immediately he tells father, it seems, I don't know, they spoke in English, he wants to become a priest. And my father said, no problem, get rid of <laughs> I suppose so, I don't know what, what they spoke at that time. One day uh, after my exams, uh, my uncle, Monsignor uh, Matthew Valangri, was the college, uh, uh, college uh, hostler prefect and lecturer in the college. He was passing in a bus, and at the village bus stand, uh, my brother was also standing there to take an opposite direction. When uh, he saw, my uncle saw me, my brother Joe's, he told him, tell Varghese to come and meet me in the evening. Tell him to come to stay with me tonight. So I went there with him, knowing that time there's no phone, and I went to, you know, to stay with him. And, and usually the seminary does not uh, accept failed students. But since you have good marks, I can recommend, and they will take you in the seminary. But since you are telling me once uh, North in, um, uh, wanting to join the North Indian mission, tonight a missionary from Gujarat is coming. If you want, you can uh, meet him and uh, tell him if you want, if you wish. Not because I tell you. If you want, you want to meet him and then see. So that night I stayed. He gave me a room in the hostel and I stayed with him and met uh, the missionary was Father uh, Michael Urutia. We went to, uh, we had talked to him and broken English, broken English and my broken English. So then it, he accepted me, okay, he said, and then... Uh, the first born of my mother was a boy, my elder brother. Then came my sister, and my mother was a totally satisfied woman. I was born third in the family, so I was dispensable. So she offered me to God. I still remember very vividly. I was standing under a tree, my favorite tree, a coconut tree, all alone, deep in thought. I may have been five or six years of age. And there I decided that I would become a priest. After that, I have never looked back. Uh, it was Father Urutia who got into contact with me through correspondence while I was in the 10th standard. And uh, locally, there was a diocesan vocation promoter who was in touch with all potential candidates. And he, in turn, put me in touch with uh, Gujarat province. There are many factors that contribute 
to my vocation joining the Jesuit order. My family, my brothers and sisters, the life of prayer and the values of the family, daily mass, being an altar server also helped. But just like Peter and Andrew and James and John, who were called by Jesus on the shores of Galilee, I was caught in the net by two Spanish Jesuits, Father Perez and Father Urutia, who caught me in the net on the shores of Esoa and dragged me to St. Xavier's Loyola Hall where I studied as a boarder in the Apostolic School. From then, there was no turning back. What I cherish most was the opportunity given me by the society of being in the service of education in all its diversity and the multitasking it involved in the responsibilities uh, you have just listed enabled me to develop my administrative abilities, taught me how to uh, handle crisis situations, helped me interact effectively with uh, all classes of people. And as a Jesuit, a religious, I could bear witness to my Jesuit calling by living out the margins, by selfless commitment and unconditional service. Uh, my deepest conviction is to be a man of God and to be recognized as such in the Indian understanding of the term. Uh, but the other conviction I also have is deep respect for people, whether they are beggars or royalty. To me, practically everybody is the same. When I was in the college also, I treated the pews and the bhangi with equal respect, as I would to all those, to the governor. I visited the governor many times. Uh, but to me, it was the same. And even if I told Kimji, our sweeper, that uh, I would do something for him, I kept my word. Or if I told him I would meet him at a certain time, I would cancel other appointments if they were there to make sure that I would give him the time. All I can say is uh, that I am uh, deeply attached to the society of Jesus, whom I consider as my mother and love very, very, very much. I owe practically all my growth to the society. For me, here and now, Guj Gujarat is a society. You are, your life is the best advertisement, they say, best example. And that is what I had been doing, my life. So whether you take it uh, as an example or you take it uh, other way, I'm not bothered. Because uh, for me, my name, my prestige, my fame is not important. So larger interest of the province is to forget the Holy Trinity that within you, I, me, and myself. Larger interest is to go beyond you. Uh, basically, I believe the best Bible is you yourself, living Bible. And that is what uh, people appreciate also, the non-Christians with uh, me, that I'm not imposing anything. I, they know me as a missionary. They know me. I, may, I don't make any secret about that. I make it up. I'm a missionary. I'm, a, I'm here to uh, preach Christ. But then, uh, m m message of love. So I tell the, the, the message of love and the forgiveness and there's something I emphasize, something like that, and people see that help them immensely to love the, the idea of forgiveness. The manifesto of Jesus, Luke 4, 1918, was a great inspiration for me, where Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, quoting Isaiah, I came to liberate the imprisoned and let free the slaves and so on. I thought, if you are dedicating your life for something, then give it for the best possible cause. 
I had a feeling that it was the poor who needed you most. And that gave me meaning, fulfillment, as well as uh, being with the poor was a source of consolation for me. I have a deep conviction that a priest, in whichever field or apostolate he works in, he is first and foremost a pastor, a priest, called to work in God's vineyard. And therefore, to spread the kingdom of God through the values of Jesus Christ and the values of gospel, of the gospel. Because uh, that is the important thing uh, for life, to be constantly learning, 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 learning. To the seniors, I would say thanks for modeling your inspiring convictions and selfless endeavors. To the younger members, I would say it is important to live life fully, to be lifelong learners, to invest time and energy to, in creative ventures, to reinvent yourselves. The moment you feel you have outgrown a stage of your life, to take risks, to jump out of your comfort zones. A Jesuit is a man on fire, always moving to new frontiers, in a zeal to set the whole world on fire as a servant leader for the greater glory of God. But the younger generation particularly, I'd say, choose your vocation. What is the meaning of your vocation to religious life? What do you want? Choose first. Then stick to it for the rest of your life. Whether you have got millions of rupees or money, whether you have a big institution, go back to your origin. Go back to your initial foundation of vocation. I'll be just at his hand, being led, allowing to be. And that is, it's not only discernment, but daily prayer is that, Lord, what do you want me to do today? And do the work. So the younger generation should make it clear, their mission statement. I like the younger generation. They are up to date with everything. They are very generous, self-giving. I hear a lot of criticism about the younger generation, but I am quite appreciative of them. They present before you uh, a changing society, an advancing society. Uh, we have to learn from them. In the formation, if I can put in a word, it would be that we should uh, pay more attention to interiority and self-awareness among our uh, scholastics. And they should be taught systematic methods of meditation from the Indian traditions to explore their own inner self, as well as deepen self-awareness. Scholastics are uh, up to date with the modern gadgets. That's a very good thing. My formation, what, what helped me first, my reading helped me. And so I also would like to uh, people to read a lot. We are better prepared than most people in the world for uh, expressing ourselves through our formation and things like that. So uh, make a, try also on the writing. Jesuits can write much better than most people, uh, most writers in, uh, in, in, in Gujarat. Uh, any Jesuit can write better because they have the language, they have the wisdom, they have the formation. And so make use of that, uh, the talents you have. Uh, uh, it's also a very demanding job, uh, writing. You have to, uh, it, this may not be instant success, but then you have to pursue it, uh, writing, you become a writer. That you do your best at all times. To make the best of the opportunities you have information in your training to make the best use of your time and then learn to accept one another though we come from different culture and different background to accept and to love one another <laughs>